Good morning, good morning. We are live and ready to start our dinosaurs drawing and painting class. So, put your to pop on. Cool, there you are. As you come in, guys, if you can just um, let me know your name below and let me know where you've joined us from. That'd be really, really cool. So while you're waiting, my name is Mrs. Parker and I am going to be your teacher today. This is the, I think this is the third live class that we've done. So we've done a monsters one. We've also, yesterday we did a flamingo one. Today is dinosaurs and tomorrow will be kookaburras. So if you haven't seen the previous ones and you want to, um, you can go on, back on our page and join in on those ones. So we've got Nathan from Rotorua in New Zealand. Hello, New Ze fellow New Zealander there. Uh, Logan and Hayden from Melbourne. I've seen you a couple of times. It's awesome you're back again, yay. Cool, guys. Amelia and Henry again from Munda. Indy 7 from Montrus. Montrus. Hania from Craigieburn. Melbourne. Hello, hello, Yushan and Jesse from Craigieburn again. These guys have been very diligent. I love it. Just a couple more minutes, or maybe one more minute, then we'll get started because most of us are here. Dane and Gemma from Melbourne, Invercargill, freezing, freezing, hello, Chloe from Invercargill, I'm from New Zealand as well, I'm from Wellington, Windy Wellington, cool. Azara, Azara, that's a beautiful name, sorry if I said that wrong, from Melbourne, Jesse and Daniel from Sydney, cool, Smarth from Melbourne, Cool guys, it's just about all of us, we're all here on time, yay! So, today we're going to be drawing dinosaurs in Harvey from Somerville. Hello Han Harvey. Um, I'm just trying to think of an easy one. I think we might start with this one. I'm just going to pull it over. And Stella and Hazel from More Craigie Bear. More, and more Max and Amelia from New Zealand. Hey, I've seen you guys a couple of times. You're coming a lot, which is great as well. Okay, let's make a sound. I'm just going to flick the comments because I get distracted, all right? And then I'll come back. You can keep talking to me, though. Um, so we're going to do some dinosaur drawing today. Now, your mums or your dads or whomever may have emailed me and got the drawing guides. If you've got the drawing guides emailed to you, that may help you today. But if they haven't, on this page, I just posted the drawing guides in the comments, all right? So if you go on to my last post on this page, you'll be able to see the guides, which might help you. But I'm going to draw them for you anyway, so you're going to be okay. So we're going to draw three dinosaurs, and then one of them we're going to color together. The one that you choose to color can be whatever you want. I am going to draw my dinosaurs really big today because it makes it easier to show you. However, if you draw really, really small, that's okay as well. You can draw them small if you want. You could put the whole three dinosaurs on one page and create a really cool scene. Or you can do them all on different paper, okay? It's up to you how you want to create your own sort of cool dynamic dinosaur picture. Okay, so let's get started. Who can tell me? Because I confess... Sometimes I forget what the dinosaur's real names are. So who can tell me what the name of this dinosaur is? I think that it starts with S, but I may be wrong. I'm just going to pull up the comments. So someone comments below what this is, and I'm just going to get, get us set up to start drawing. And while I'm doing that, make sure you've got a bit of paper in front of you. You have a bit of paper, white paper, whatever size you have is A-OK. -okay. Trice tops? Is it Tricey tops? Is it? Okay. Oh, Stegosaurus. I've got Stegosaurus and I've got Tricey tops. That's so not how you say it. Hmm. Which one is it? Which one? I'm going to put that right up there so you can see. 
That's better. Okay, let's make a start. Stegosaurus. Two votes for Stegosaurus. I thought it was a Stegosaurus as well. We're going to go with Stegosaurus. Okay, let's grab, I'm going to shimmy this up so we can see closer, yeah? Not so you can see my face, so you can see the drawing. All right. Grab a black marker pen. Oh, that's kind of fuzzy. A black marker. You can grab a pencil. You can grab a crayon, whatever you want. So we're going to start with the face, and then we're going to draw the big sort of body shape, and then we're going to go put the details in, all right? It's moving around. Why is it doing that? Okay. So let's start with the little head. So it's like a little curve. If you can do that for me, that would be awesome. I'm gonna put a little bit under the bottom. And I'm gonna give him like a um up here, I'm gonna give him like a funny sort of chin bit. I don't know why my phone's doing that, sorry guys. Are you there? How's that light? Hopefully that light's good enough. I'm missing a light. I've got to go turn a light on. All right. Let's then put a big hump or bump for the stegosauruses. I don't know if that's a word. And then a nice tail at the back. If you can get a curvy line. It's kind of like a mountain and curvy line coming around the back. I'm just turning the light on. It's a little bit dark today, so let so make sure we're going to fly it. Cool. We're good. Now, let's go back to here. Pull in a little bit of a tail. And then coming under. What should we do? Then we'll come under. See, I've just kind of left some gaps. Let's leave some gaps down the bottom at the moment. And then we're going to go put some legs in. Okay, so let's start with this one here. So this one and this one, they're on the other side of the Stegosaurus's, I don't know if that's it, Stegosaurus's body. Okay, so we're, because they're on the other side, that means that their stomach or their body area is in front. So we have a line across. These two legs are on the side that are closest to us. So we put them on the other side of the body and we don't have that line coming through. Okay. So over here, let's draw like a paw shape. It's kind of like his hands, like or his foot's kind of like that. Curve it around. I'm going to put some little heads on. Then this one, I'm going to give him a nice big leg and then a big paw on the bottom of his foot because they have these big, big feet that they can stand on. Come up. Then we're going to do another one like that. Just going to wait a few minutes because I'm going to get told that I'm going too fast. Let me know how you're going at the moment, okay? How are we going? Jake said this is cool. Thanks, Jake. Let me know. We're going all right. If you're going all right, kids, just give me a, um, just like it so I can see the little like buttons come up. I know you're probably concentrating. It's okay. We can take our time. Just need these lights. Lights are funny today. We're good. We're good. Excellent. Awesome, guys. You're following really, really well. Okay. Let's then go up here. We'll put, oops, that doesn't matter. Another funny, very fat legs, because they're quite heavy, all right? So they need some really, really good legs to hold them. Let's then join, join that body together. Remember, we don't put the line on top of those ones, because those ones are in front. Look at you guys go, awesome. 
Okay, one over here. Another little fat leg with some paws on the bottom. And coming up. Cool. So we've got the basic shape of our dinosaur at the moment. Thanks, Danny. You like it so far? Excellent. Not there. Thanks, Sam. You commenting on my drawing. All right. Um, now, you can make your Stegosaurus happy or sad or angry, depending on how you want to draw the face. I always tend to like mine look a little bit happy, sort of cheeky. So I tend to give mine a little smile. So there's a mouth over here. Let's draw a little dot. Okay, and that dot can be for their nose. And then an eye. Now, for those of you who have been following me for the last couple of days, when we draw our eyes, remember we leave a little white bit there. Yeah, a little white bit. So it looks like the eye is more realistic. Now, this is where you can go to town. Probably don't understand what that means, kids. This is where you can be as creative as you want to be. So see around the top here of the Stegosaurus. We've got some of his, um, I don't know what we call them. Do we call them fins? Do we call them back pieces? I'm not sure. Half is is happy. I like doing happy ones. My monsters I did the other day were happy too. This is where you can draw as many as you want, okay? So you don't even have to. You could draw them that shape. You could draw them a different shape. We're doing dynamic dinosaurs, right? So we can be as funky or as cool as we want. Um, I actually quite like some different jagged shapes. Imagine if the dinosaur had some kind of like scary shapes coming around. Kind of wouldn't want to get hit with something like that. If you want to keep it um, plates. Ah, they're called plates. Okay. If you want to keep it more realistic, you do shapes that kind of look like this. Okay, it's up to you. So go ahead and pop as many of different plates that come off the Stegosaurus's back. I'm just going to pop a few more in. So you can put some all along the front. You can pop some so they are behind. And do as many or as few as you want to. I think I might have got a bit carried away with my one there. But I quite like it. So we've got the Stegosaurus, we've drawn some really cool funky plates along the back. Now you can do whatever you want to your Stegosaurus's body. You can leave it or you could draw circle patterns on it. So it looks like he's got dots. You could do little dots that are coloured in which tend to look more like moles or freckles. From the Philippines, yay, hello. Oh, well, that's so cool. This is the first person who's joined us from Philippines. We've had Australia and New Zealand, but Philippines, welcome, yay. So cool. Alrighty, sorry guys, I'm excited. I think it's very cool that we can paint and draw together with people from all around the world. Yeah. Let's keep practicing, guys. This is only our first one. I'm just showing you some different techniques, okay? Dots, freckles. You could even on some of these plates, you could draw some lines. For those of you who did my monster class, you'll see that. Remember that I did some lines. So you could do patterns and stuff in them as well, okay? We can create some really, really cool ideas today. I must be in a super duper creative mood. You're lucky. Because we're getting some good stuff coming out of me today. Curve lines. You could colour one in black. You could leave one. 
with your lines you could color one line in and leave one line white color in the next one there are so many different ideas for your stegosaurus okay so we're just seeing some ideas and practicing you can go away after this and fix yours up or add more details to it if you want to okay should we start on the next dinosaur if you're ready for the next dinosaur can you let me know please so just put a yes in the comments already or oh, you're amazing mrs parker <laughs> whichever we good we good i've got lots of like emojis with the open faces that mean you're amazed at my drawings ha look at all these love hearts you guys are so good all right should we start the next one that's what i want to know i know it's delayed the timing so i'm just gonna wait for a sec all right while you're making your amazing dinosaurs dynamic dinosaurs tricks tyrannosaurus rex tricks do you mean this one do you mean this one whoever and um, i know it's not wendy because i know it's your child that's commenting do you mean this one t-rex are we ready for the t-rex actually i think i might do that one next because i want to do my i want to color my t-rex t-rex we're good we're good all right i'm gonna start the next one yeah cool you guys finish off what you're working on i'm gonna get started can you tell me the name of this dinosaur please james you seem to have a good understanding perhaps you could let me know I'm going to do that one. We're going to do the T-Rex last because I want to colour my T-Rex in and make a big picture out of it. What's the name of this dinosaur up here, guys? Show me that back a bit. There we are. You can see better. There's heaps of you on today. Twice the amount of kids that are on today that I thought there was going to be. This is good. This is good. Oh, this is the, the how do you say that? Triceratops. The T one. Not the T-Rex, the T one. T-Tops. I'm just going to call it T-Tops, right? Thanks, Gemma. <laughs> T-Tops. I don't know why dinosaurs have to have really, really complicated names. This one was a little bit tricky. How are we going to go with this one? We're going to be all right? Yep, we're good to go. You guys are amazing. All right, let's start. We're going to kind of like we did with this Stegosaurus, right? We are going to go um, around the body shape. Then we're going to draw on the legs. Remember, these ones are at the front because they don't have that bit across them. These ones are at the back. And then we're going to draw on the details of the head and the horns and stuff. Move this light because it's been way too flickery. Okay, we're good to go. Ah, that's better, isn't it? Okay, let's find a point on your page. Then let's come up. Let's not worry about where their horns and stuff are at the moment, eh? You can do a jaggedy line. Going up like that with a few little um, wrinkle, wrinkle bits in it. Doesn't need to be perfect. Right, let's go to the bottom. Come back to the bottom of that line. And we're going to draw this little line in here. So we're going to go under. And then we're going to come up a little bit. So at the moment it just looks like we've got this long beak. Let's come here. And we're going to come around. Now I'm just going to ignore the horns. We're going to put them on later. This kind of looks like a um, a plate shape that sort of comes right around the back there. Okay. 
Then we're going to pop in straight along the back of the body. And then it comes down for the tail. Let's see. How are we going? Mine looks a little bit funny. <laughs> you do, James. You know all about them. T-tops. Yeah, T-tops is where it's at. All right. Okay. I get distracted and crack up. Okay. Um, where should we go? From the bottom here. Let's draw a tail. Kind of. And then we're going to do this. And then we're going to do this. And then we're going to stop because we're going to put the legs in. Going good, we're going good. Going good, you're laughing at me, so that's always good. Laughter's fun. Oh yeah. I don't mind if you laugh at me. Okay, under here we're gonna do one leg. They're funny, funny. Someone got angry at me, probably because I called it T tops. Oh yeah. Um, then we will do the one on top. They have this big, they kind of have quite flat feet. Flat feet. Don't worry, we're just going to practice. I've been drawing for 30 years, guys. I'm showing my age here. All right, takes practice. You've got some drawing guides as well. You can trace them later if you want to. Okay, but make sure you practice first. If you need to trace some, that's cool. I used to trace a lot when I was little. Uh, let's just draw that under here. We are just practicing. We're going to do the T-Rex soon. That's going to be cool because we can put lots of big teeth in. Mine kind of looks like an elephant. Why does it look like an elephant, guys? Oops, put that line over. We've got some funny legs in there. It looks like an elephant at the moment because these look like his ears. We haven't drawn the horns on. On your feet, you can go one, two, three, like the little toes. One, two, three. You can put them all together or you can space them out. I kind of like to space them out a little bit. If there's enough room. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cool. Are we ready for the horns? Let's draw one because I don't want him to look like an elephant anymore. Now, if you've got a pencil, I'm doing a minor marker so it shows better, you can rub out some of the lines where our horns are supposed to be in front. Like those black lines here, they shouldn't be there. <laughs> You're cracking me up. There's some brilliant comments. All right, uh, let's put a little one on the tip of the nose. That looks like a raindrop. Um, now, let's draw, you can draw a happy or a squiggly mouth, just like we did with the Stegosaurus. You can do it happy, sad, grumpy, whatever you're feeling. <laughs> Tono witch. All right, let's put a little dot for a nostril. And we need an eye, because this thing's got to be able to see, right? Before it comes in and attacks us. Let's put an eye with the wiggly line. So it looks old and grumpy. Uh, then what? We can make some kind of like frilly lines that go around the outside. Let's stick in there. Ruffles. We call them ruffles, actually. 
ruffle and then a ruffle along the back. Cute. Who's done this? Who's done two? Who's finished? Who's a Speedy Gonzala? It's 10.30. I want to get us onto our T-Rex. T-Rex. We're good. We're good. We're ready. Because the next one we're going to do... And then you can choose which one you colour. Or if you want to, you can add another dinosaur on your page at the moment. If you've got more room, you can add another one on. This is what everyone wants to do. We love the T-Rex because we can put big teeth in. Yep, we're good. We're good. I've got some love hearts and some things coming through, which mean we must be ready to go. I don't want to hold you guys up. All right, we're ready for the main show, you guys. We're ready for the main show. We've done T-tops, Stegosaurus. Why are you guys going so fast today? I love it. You must all got used to me working really, really fast. Someone keeps giving me angry faces. <laughs> I think you're pushing the wrong button. All right, angry at me because I'm going too fast properly. That's all right. I'm gonna post this video, all right, guys, so we can keep. You can come back and pause it and keep practicing. Alrighty, T Rex. Yes, let's go. Now, this kind of looks like a baby T Rex. His face or his mouth and his head, I should say, is a really big in comparison to the body. And that's because of the way that he is standing, okay? So let's start with drawing in his head. So I'm going to draw a line with a little hump for his other nostril. And then I'm going to come up. So for you, I would just sort of go around a bit. If you can, just draw a line. And then maybe come in and pop in a little hump. And then some smaller lines. Now, same thing as we did with the other dinosaurs, right? We're going to go around the shape, up, and back around the shape of the body. Then we're going to pop the details in. So, we go a big dive down, and then we come back up for his tail, which you can put as high or as low as you want. Julio, all right, where should we go from here? Let's actually go from here, let's go up. Don't worry about the teeth and stuff at the moment. We'll go up again. He looks like he's smiling, but he's not going to smile soon when I put his teeth in. Cool. So I've done this line. Then I've drawn this line. And I've come up here. Okay. Then let's come across. And come up like that. How are we going? It's tricky, isn't it, guys? Find the bottom of the head. Let's draw the rest of the body on and then we'll come back to that bit, okay? Let's come under. I'm going to leave a gap because I'm going to put this big leg in here. And I'm going to come back up and join the top. Good, we good? Face with a big chin. That's good, now. Um, I know that's not Nadia who's talking, that's your kid. But that's good if it's got a big chin because we're going to put teeth on. Big face will make it look even scarier. All right. Body. 
We've got a head with the chin slash mouth area coming through. We're good. Now we're going to pop in, what should we do now? Let's pop in our legs, okay? And then we'll come back to that face bit with the teeth. You're going to do a couple of lines. This is a, a poor shape. If I just draw it in really lightly. Popping a, a blobby shape. It's almost like a circle with a circle. And then to make your T-Rex scary, pop in some big claws off their feet, which is what they use to sort of claw you or to grab when they're walking. Then I'm going to put a line. I was supposed to do some pastels, wasn't I? Put a line. How are you going? We're good, we're good. I am also going to do one in pastel because I want to colour it in with watercolour. So I'm going to go super quick. Would you like me to show you again? I'm going to show you again, alright? Let's start again. Let's go. Hit. Tail. Line. Foot in, claw, claw, claw. That's about where we were before. Okay. Then we've got this line we can draw in for a leg. Then we can draw in another line. Lines on his feet. See how my one doesn't look exactly like that one at the moment, does it? Every one that we do will be slightly different. I'm drawing an oil pastel because I'm going to put some watercolours on. If I use my markers, they tend to run a little bit. Right, are we ready for this teeth area? Are we ready for the teeth area yet? You're laughing at me probably because I changed and started again, didn't I? I bet you guys started again as well. Alright, let's start with our little half circle over at the top of the head. A little nostril. Another eye. Now this is a very different eye to what we usually do. Once we put the eye on, they start to look good, don't they? Again, right? Yes. Okay, let's do the teeth, right? So let's put another line up here on the top one. This bit here. Another line. So that kind of is going to look like the mouth. Then I want you to put some jagged, they're kind of like triangles. You see that? Jagged teeth coming off. 
Then let's do another little mouth bit like that on the bottom. And then you're going to draw the teeth again. I'm going to put some along the side. I can't see as many along here because of the way I've drawn, but I want to put a lot along here. You can draw them with some teeth missing if you want to. You might have lost a few teeth. See, so mine are yeah, starting to look scary, all right? How we go. Now, we've got our teeth done. We've got our legs. Where do we want to go now? Should we go with, I think we need to put the little arms on, don't we? So let's pop the arms on. So let's do one. See how we talked before? This little arm has a line in front of it because it's behind the body. So we're just going to do a tiny, like a tiny, tiny paw of the hand. Like so. And then we're going to draw one tiny arm on the front of his body. His arms are really, really small. Then you can go along now and you can make this T-Rex however you want it. You can make it your own. So you can put a panel like this along the bottom. I quite like this. I'm going to pop that on mine. And then I'm going to add some lines to divide it up. Kind of looks like scales. How are we going? Let me know how you're going, guys. So we've done three dinosaurs. We've done our Stegosaurus. You've done your, this one, which I call T-tops, which is Tricetops or however you pronounce it. And now we've just done our T-Rex. You can choose which one you want to color in now, or you can keep drawing and you can watch me color and come back and color your one in later. So I'm going to do my T-Rex and I've drawn it with my oil pastel. If you've got a crayon, that works really well because it means that I can now go and pop on top my water pastels with water. And that means that the lines aren't going to run because oil and water don't mix. Before I do that, I'm just going to draw some kind of scene in the background. So when you were looking at, let's look at this one. So see this one here? We've got a tr some trees in the background, some rocks and some grass. Okay, so I'm probably going to add something like that. You don't have to. You could do lots of different dinosaurs in your backgrounds. You could do shapes. You could do an underwater scene, whatever you're wanting. Okay? Cool. All right. So let's draw a line across. where the T-Rex is standing. Yeah, that's cool, Angela. I'm just calling it T-Tops today because it's funny. Cool. Uh, right, then we are going to come up here. Let's draw a tree. So I'm going to just draw the trunk. This is our fun, creative art class today, isn't it, guys? That's what we're focusing on. We're not going for perfection. We're going for creativity and fun. Then I might just do some more crazy tree foliage in the background like that. Um, over the other side, I'm going to do a bush, more like a shrubby bush. So I'm just going to go like this behind and then a smaller one smaller shrub in front of that one they kind of look like clouds at the moment but i'm going to color them in and um, let's do a rock and then a line so then it looks like it's kind of sitting on the ground A 
shrub. Yeah, right, let's start coloring in. So, on my trusty watercolors here, if you don't have watercolor paints, you can use felts or textures. Um, what do you call, yeah, you call them textures, sorry, over here. Um, what else you got? You might have some color pencils, whatever you want, or you can leave it black and white. So let's start. I'm going to start with my coloring in my background first. So I've got a lot of water on my brush. And then I'm just going to come in. You can see, yeah. And get a nice, good amount of paint on my palette. And I've got a darker green here. So I'm going to put that probably in the background here. And what I love about this right now is these oil pastels. See how I can paint over them and the lines don't smudge. I'm going to colour that in a nice dark green. It's kind of dark. And then I'm going to get that green as well, and I'm going to pop it over in the background here. How many of you have got um, oil pastels or crayons at home? oil pastels or crayons can you let me know because they're actually so good to draw with when you're going to color over top so we've got a nice dark green The background. Now you don't have to use colors um, that represent the actual thing. So what I mean by that is if because the grass is green or because a tree is green, you don't have to color it in green. You can color it in whatever color you want. Okay, let's just move this over a little bit back so we can see. There we are. Okay, so we've got the background. Um, now I'm just going to change my green. I'm just going to grab a lighter one because I'm going to colour in the tree bit that's in front in a lighter green. Just so it looks like it is actually in front of something. So when something is closer to us, it is lighter. And when it goes further away in the distance or if it's behind something, it will be darker. So I'm doing that because I know this tree is in front of the other one or the shrub, I've made it lighter. Same with my little top of my tree over here. Put some lighter green in there. See how awesome that oil pastels are? You can just go over them. All right, and then we've got a little bit of tree shrub likeness down here. Somehow they got blue in my palette. I don't know how that happened. Colouring that in. Cool. Let's now get some brown. Get some nice dark brown. And I'm going to colour in my tree trunk. Just mixing a little bit there, that's all right. If you use more and more paint, it's going to be darker. The more water you use with your water paints, the lighter it's going to be. Nice brown around the background. How's that looking? Good. All right, what else can we do brown? I think that we're going to do um, this ground that he's standing on brown. So I'm going to pick 
a, dark, a different darker brown that's not sort of the tree. It's more like, um, it's more an ash, sort of like a brownie black color. I can try and explain it clearer. And I'm going to do that along the back. It's a bit too much water. On the back of the picture. And I want to lighten it as it comes forward so it can show depth in our picture. It's mixing with that one. That's okay. Then I'm just going to add water to my brush. And I'm just going to blend it down. So I'm not adding any more paint on my brush at the moment, just water, and then it's going to make it look like it gets lighter as it comes down. Try to go around my T-Rex's foot there. Is that looking lighter? A little bit, isn't it? Become lighter as I come down the bottom. So these are just some different ways that you can colour in your pictures. We'll get to the T-Rex in a minute, but it's always a really good idea to do your background first because it's the thing that's behind. So when you colour in your dinosaur, you can colour that in last and then you can cover up your background if you made any mistakes. How are we going? Let's colour in our stone a little bit darker as well. So we can see that one's in front. So check to see how we're all going here. Cool. We're loving the dinosaurs. Yay, thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, you have oil pastels. Awesome. Can try doing this technique. Thanks, guys. There's some lovely people on today. Thank you. Right, that's probably a little bit dark, but hey, we'll roll with it, right? Now, where are we at? What do I need to do? That little puppy in front there. I'm just going to colour it in a tiny light, light bit because it's in the front. Yes. Okay. Let's think about our sky. Now I'm actually going to colour my sky in darker down here. And then I'm going to lighten it as it comes up to the top. Lighter down the bottom there. That way we'll be able to see our T-Rex stand out a bit better. And then it's a nice light blue around the background. The sky, again, you don't have to colour your sky in. If you have a sky, you don't have to colour it in blue. You can colour it in whatever colour you like. You might even want to do it like a nice reds and... um. Reds and oranges. Now, I reckon that I am actually going to, what colour do you think I should colour in my T-Rex, guys? I'm thinking I'm going to do it something a little bit crazy. Should we go crazy? Sky. T 
T-Rex time. What colour am I going? Probably going to colour it in my favourite colour at the moment. Crazy, crazy T-Rex time. Who can guess what colour I'm going to paint it in? Okay, see. Orange and red, yes. You are right. I am going to paint my T-Rex orange. Because it's bright and fun. And orange looks amazing against blue. Because orange and blue, my students know, orange and blue are complementary, complementary colour schemes. So what that means, green, yellow teeth. Yes, we can do yellow teeth. Um, is their opposite, so they contrast or they stand out against each other. Look at that. Doesn't that orange look great? Oops, I'm going to leave that bit there. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave that bit there. I'm going to colour something in on his little body there. Colouring in his arm. And bit there, his mouth bit. Got a very, very big open mouth. Should probably should put some something in his mouth. Colour in his leg. Maybe his little toes. I'm just going to put my thing there because it's moving around. I'm going to colour in the bottom. Where's that going? Oh, that should have some blue behind there. Let's colour in the bottom. So, I think it's um, pink. It's going pinky red. I might colour in darker pink in there. Can I leave that one orange? I'm going to put some more pink there. I'm not going to get my lighter pink on the other ones. Oops. So we need yellow teeth, yes? I want to yellow teeth. Let's clean my brush. Let's find my yellow here. Nice, nice, yummy yellow. Let's give him some yellow teeth because he didn't brush his teeth. Or he ate too many Easter eggs. How many people have been eating too many Easter eggs? Easter time, isn't it? Easter eggs in there. That looks cool. Then I'm going to colour his eye in blue, because I like blue, it's a bluey green in there. Um, what should we do, I crush it? I quite like his mouth, kind of darken it in there, at the back, just so that it looks like it's a really, really big deep mouth. And then I will lighten it as it comes to the front. How's that look? Does that look all right? Yeah, it looks all right, doesn't it? Okay, let's lighten it as it comes to the front. Cool. So that's our basic 
colour there. Now I'm just going to dry, dry it off with the hair dryer. Okay guys, so block your ears because it will be loud. Did we survive that? The reason I did that is once you've painted your, if you painted it with watercolors, you can do some cool things with some, and you can get some color pencils or some textures and put some stuff on top. So for instance, where I've got my um, orange here, you can, oh, that's not working very well. You could, Come around the back and you can tidy some of the bits up if you need to. Uh, what do I love to do? Okay, let's get some, you could get some colour pencils and you can then shade on top. So see how I'm shading here where the blue is with the grass? It's going to make it look even darker. And it just adds some more depth to your work. And then what will happen is that T-Rex, that orange is going to pop out against that there. Isn't it? You could come back with some colour pencils, some green ones. And then you could go back and draw over some of your shading, over some of your leaves, or you could get, now that it's dry, you can come back with a marker pen and we can draw some more lines on our T-Rex. And then we could pop um, some patterns in there. Make it look different. Have some fun with it. Do some um, triangles. We could do some some dots in here. Put some circles coloured in. Kind of looks like the T-Rex has got a um, a belt on, doesn't it? We could do some. Oh, I really love some really nice lines of his tail. Then we could do some petal shapes coming up. There's so many different things you can then go in and draw over top, guys. So there we have it for today. So we've done three dinosaurs. It's been an hour, so that's all that we've got time for today. And then we've taken one of our dinosaurs. Or, if you've done some other ones, that's cool, and you've coloured it in. So once you've coloured it in, if you've done watercolours, you can then go add some different patterns and stuff on top. Whatever it is that you'd like, and make it look your own, okay? You can create your scene and everything that you want. So thank you so much for everyone who has stayed right till the end of class today. You guys are awesome. And um, tomorrow we are doing kookaburras or birds, Australian birds, so you can come on and draw that with me. But what I would love is when you've finished your dinosaurs, if you can get your parents to post them in the comments below on this video, okay? I'm going to share this video and then we can see what everyone's done because we've got people from New Zealand, Australia and the Philippines following us today, which is awesome, guys. So enjoy your dinosaurs share them with me so i can see what a wonderful job you've done and have a great day okay see you